Bob, the concept of emergence is something that I have really wondered about for a long time because the typical reductionism that everything can be explained in terms of simpler and simple things and biology in terms of chemistry, chemistry in terms of physics, physics in terms of fundamental laws and principles is the traditional way science has worked. But we always have this feeling that there's something extra at these levels that can't be explained, this concept of emergence. And I've talked to philosophers and theologians and scientists, but, but you're both. You're a trained physicist and a theologian. So looking at it from both perspectives, how important is emergence? I think it's a really important piece, and it links science, philosophy, and theology in a nice way. Uh, as you say, it's uh, the key argument against reductionism, and it goes in a variety of ways. A simple argument is, well, there's epistemic emergence. There are properties and processes that arise in time, in evolution or whatever, which can't be explained epistemically in terms of the lower levels. So the wetness of water requires quantum mechanics, but it isn't explained by it. Uh, I think a lot of folks grant that. The more complicated one is, uh, is there any sense in which there's ontological emergence? That is, is there more to this world? than what physics can describe as matter. And that doesn't mean dualism. It's not matter versus spirit, please. It's a monist view of the world. But it's, it's just- Monist a, meaning there's only one kind of stuff. Yes, only <laughs> one kind of stuff. But the question really is, can physics really account for it entirely? That is, is, is all that physics talks about is all that's real? Or is there something genuinely valid about emergent phenomena? And of course, the key one is mind. So without being a dualist, without saying that mind is a substance, which I'm not doing, is there a way in which you could say mind is a clue to the way the world is? It's as much embedded in the universe as matter is. It's a, it's a characteristic. It's a fundamental phenomena in nature. And of course, the key to, to saying that is to show that mind somehow influences nature, which is usually called top-down causality or whole part causality or supervenience. Now, again, it's a huge debate, right? But the, what the goal is to say you can't have mind without brain. That's not an issue because we're not dualists. But is mind given some sort of true causal role in the world? Or are my thoughts, which I think govern my behavior, I mean, I choose to wave my hands around, are they just a reflection of some sort of pre-set-up laws of physics which get reflected in mind as an epiphenomenon? As the Churchill would say, mind is the brain as digestion is the stomach. It isn't something that the digestion isn't something being done to the stomach. It's what the stomach's doing. <laughs> Right, So, so the, the top-down argument is the key argument in making a case for full-fledged emergence. Okay. I understand the issue with brain and mind. That was my old field. I did my doctorate in brain science. I'm very familiar with those arguments. <clears throat> Does the question of emergence, though, in this strong sense that you're talking yes. about it, apply to other areas besides mind? Because mind can right. have it. Mind can be a definite category by itself, or is it reflective of a whole bunch of things in biology or chemistry that are true emergence in this ontological sense, where right. there's a really difference in the nature of being? Right. Well, it, it, you just said it perfectly. There's a whole spectrum of emergent phenomena that sort of coincide with evolution of life. I was just choosing mine because it's where some of the arguments are. But the theological significance is, if you say God creates persons, in God's image, God comes into relation with them. God loves us, right? God loves you and me. Is the me there, the person there, what we take it to be? That is, right, the, the lived, embodied moral agent who's accountable to the world and tries to, to walk justly with the Lord? Or is that just a kind of epiphenomenon and a, a, you know, a folk talk about <laughs> physics, right? So if we can't really argue from a philosophy of science point of view, for a genuine, robust emergence, however you do it, it undermines the theological language about the dignity of persons, about discipleship, about our experience. A lot like the conversations about time and whether time is real or a block universe undermine our sense of being a historical creature that really exists in time. So what I'm saying is the, the philosophical debates over emergence in the context of science have tremendous theological significance because they either shore up or tend to undercut what's a kind of given in our tradition, which is that we have a relation with God as a whole person. Let me see if I understand this, <clears throat> that you believe that there's only one kind of stuff, so you're a monist, yes. but also believe that as you go up 
the scale that 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 each level becomes something special uh, and, and has its own character, not just in appearance, but an ability to then have top-down causation. Yeah. So something is manifested not out of something ethereal, but at, only out of those constituent <clears throat> parts. But it it becomes of something of such that it then has independent powers, and that gives you. Uh, theological uh, confidence because then that entity, as, as far as a person is concerned, using the same principle of, mm -hmm. as, uh, of emergence, mm -hmm. is something that God can relate to. He said it perfectly. <laughs> that's, that's great. I didn't know what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, you will. <laughs> no, I mean, what, what we take, we take as a starting point in religious experience, right, that we're dealing with persons. You, you, you love one another. You care for one another. You feed the homeless. I mean, just the basic, the presupposition of all that is you're dealing with the phenomena you see as the real, real you. You, know, you don't think in terms of just physics. So, but how to warrant that in this new world of science and the challenge of reductionism is to argue for some form of emergence that gives that. Now, there's a different way of doing it, and that is people like, folks like process theologians will use Whitehead's dipolar view of reality, that everything that's real has a mental and physical component, not, dual, not duality, not Cartesian or Platonic substances of mind and matter. But they will say nothing emerges in time. Ultimately, there's a dimension of experience or a capacity of experience at every level of nature. So there is a competitive emergence, a philosophical competitive mm -hmm. emergence. Uh, that's, that's important to note. But most of the folks in theology and science tend not to go that route. They tend to go the route of emergence because they realize there's so much at stake theologically in the sense of the, the sense of the fullness of a person. But when you do that, when you need emergence to get the fullness of a person, that concept of emergence then is applied in the same robust way at all different levels, not right. just for a person. Absolutely. Right. And that allows you to talk about animal rights, about suffering of animals as a theologically significant. Right? You, the animals aren't what they were for Descartes, just a, a sort of machine. Right? They, tr they truly are a psychosomatic unity of some kind, even though they may not be self-conscious, they're certainly conscious. And when you get to great apes, you have self-consciousness. So it allows you to see more of a spectrum of uh, God's concern for living creatures and God's intimately making them it versus just humanity in that kind of... So emergence to you as both a scientist <clears throat> and a theologian gives you a deeper, deeper and richer understanding of God's creation. Yes, and specifically of, of non-human creation. I mean, of course, human creation, but also it opens me... It allows me then to talk about God's intentions and eternal care for the non-human world in a profound way because I, I don't fall back into the mind versus matter dichotomy of animals.